Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today. For this one, we are going to do yet another Japanese sake review, and we've got one that I think will be really quite interesting actually. So, this is another new prefecture on the channel. As I've told you before, my project for the sake reviews over the next little while is to try and review one from each of the 47 prefectures in Japan. So, for the very first time, we're going to go to Nara Prefecture, and we're having a taste of a sake from Harushika Shuzo, who are actually very well respected throughout Japan. So this one is called the Shiro Meki Sake, which translates into English as um, basically like white period, like white time, essentially, I guess. Um, correct me on that if I'm wrong. But this one comes in at 15% alcohol. It's a Kasin Nigori, which means it's unfiltered. Nigori is unfiltered. And Kasin means that it's got gas, it's carbonated, and it's got 60% milled rice grains, which makes it a Ginjo Sake. And then it's also Junmai, which means it's pure rice. So if you want to give this one its full kind of title, if you like, it is a Kasin Nigori Junmai Ginjo. So yeah, make of that what you will. But a very well respected sake brewery, this one. These guys sell their sake nationally from what I gather, which is quite unusual for Japan. Most of them are very, very regional and they also export a little bit to China and Germany and America from what I understand as well. So yeah, very interesting this one. But I'm um, really curious to see how this one turns out. This one, as I say, comes to you from Nara Prefecture, Nara City to be specific. And uh, the Nagori Sakis, as I've told you before, the unfiltered ones are one of my favourite styles actually. So really looking forward to trying this one. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this. As I say, by no means an expert when it comes to Japanese sake but I really do quite enjoy do uh, enjoy these and enjoy doing these videos for you so um yeah as always with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the sake if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that hopefully I can do in the future from Harushika Shuzo very first time I'm trying one of their sakes as I said there's all the usual social media down there as well if you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer, whiskey and sake based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of sakes and things that is down there. There's also a playlist for the different whiskies I've reviewed and various different playlists for the beers from different countries and things like that that you can look at and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear that from you guys that are watching in the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated and I do recommend that you go and visit Harushika Shuzo as well that's where I bought this I actually bought this one at the brewery and they've got a nice little bar that you can sit down and taste all the different things from as well but anyway on to my brewery notes to tell you a little bit about Harushika Shuzo then so as I mentioned to you earlier, Harushika Shuzo are based in Nara City, which is the prefectural capital of Nara, and this brewery was founded back in 1884. So Nara was actually the first capital of Japan, and that dates back to the year 710, and the city is known for its temples, notably Kasuga, Horio, and Todai. Todai actually is, you know, the, the biggest wooden building in the, in the world, from what I gather, and it's got this huge big Buddha inside it, which is very, very impressive. But the brewery was founded by Seichi Imanishi, and his sake was really known for its quality, so much so that he was asked to produce sake for the imperial family. But the breweries passed down the various generations of the Imanishi family and following the Second World War, the company was restructured into a corporate organisation which is called Imanishi Seibai Shoten, which happened in 1956. So they continued to build their reputation over the following years and they began selling their sake across Japan in the late 1970s before beginning their exports in the mid-1980s. I believe it's America, Germany and uh, China were the first places they started exporting to. But over the years they've won many different awards and since 2010 there's been substantial modernizations at the brewery and the current president of the company is Kiyoshi Imanishi who I believe is around the seventh or so uh, generation of the Imanishi family to run the company. So the name of the brewery, Harushika, comes from a few different things. So the the, one of the kanjis in the Kasuga Shrine's name, it's also, they also take it from the Japanese word for deer as well, which is shika, and in ancient times the shika, the deer, were basically considered gods. So yeah, Haru Shika, Haru from one of the temples, Kasuga Temple, and shika meaning deer. And that's one of the things you'll notice when you go to Nara, there's lots of different deer um, just wandering around the place. They cut the horns off them and just let them wander around, and there's lots of people selling these little deer biscuits that tourists are feeding to them 
and things in. But, you know, to be honest, the deer in Nara will eat anything. I've had pamphlets and things taken out of my hands and the deer will just eat them. So, um, yeah, kind of interesting. But, uh, yeah, that's all you really need to know about Harushika Shuzo. Like I said, a quite well-known uh, sake brewery and probably one of the better known ones amongst tourists actually. It's, Nara is one of the more kind of touristy spots that you'll find in Japan as I say for the temples. So if you get the chance go to Nara city, check out the temples and then you can go and have some nice sakes at Harushika Shuzo which is just maybe about 10-15 minutes walk from uh, the big Starbucks uh, which is, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty nice actually. It's one of the most impressive Starbucks that you're going to find, but you'll get better drinks at the Sake Brewery, of course. But um, yeah, let's get on and actually have a taste of this sake then. So I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. So as I said to you, Harushika Shuzo, this one is called the Shiro Miki, which means like, you know, white time, white period, I guess, white stem, I think as well it translates to. Uh, but there you can see the shoe, the the kanjis on the front, Harushika, and then you can see the nice golden deer. From what they told me in the the brewery shop, this one is an, another one of their winter seasonal sakes. They've got a couple of these, about two or three. You will see me review another one of those uh, in a few videos time. I think it's a June Mai that one, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, nicely presented sake. There you can see one of the little. Kind of labels on top there and it is just a plain bottle cap on this one the other one has uh, the the shika and things on top the deer but really nicely presented this one as i said to you this one comes in at 15 percent alcohol it's a cassin nigori which means that it's unfiltered and it's carbonated and it's got 60 percent milled rice grains in it as well it's a june mai pure rice and then ginjo because it is 60 percent milled rice grains but um yeah really nicely presented this one so without further ado let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and then we'll just take the little top label off it I'll let you have a look at that and if you are a Japanese speaker of course you can pause the video and have a little read at that if you want but let's get it out and into the glasses as we always do with nigoris you want the sediment to kind of be kind of all around the place like this but you have to be careful with these ones the cassin nigoris because they are carbonated I did have a cassin nigori before from Tochigi Prefecture if I remember correctly this one is just going to go a little bit crazy. Sometimes happens, but there you can see it is just dying down now. There we go. So, only a little bit of it was lost there, but yeah. So, you can see there is quite a bit of CO2 coming out of this one. That is pretty impressive. But we'll see if we can pour a little bit into the glass and see how we get on. You have to keep these, the Harushika. Sake shoes, uh, Harushika Shuzo sakes are also unpasteurized, so if you buy these, you have to keep them in the fridge actually. But just uh, just look at that actually, you can see all the carbonation in there. Let me just take this off and stick the top back on. So, um, yeah, that's pretty impressive, I have to say. Just look at that, you can see the carbonation on this one. But what you'll always get with these Nigori sakes is that they're always very milky in terms of their appearance. It's almost like um, Kalpils or Karapisu as the Japanese call it, which is one of their kind of soda drinks. Almost tastes like uh, Skittles. You can get it both carbonated and uh, uncarbonated and I prefer the uncarbonated one. But yeah, really kind of almost milky looking thing this actually. A lot of people might be put off with this to be honest with you or think it's milky or something but trust me the, nig the Nigori Sakis are very very nice and if you look just at the edge of the glass there you can see some of the sediment just stick into this so really quite nice actually lovely kind of hazy milky white sort of thing if I put my fingers behind the glass you can see there's absolutely no transparency to this sake so um, yeah let's take a look at the aroma as I said before in other videos usually um, if it's a a seishu, if it's a clear sake, that means you 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 know it's it's see through, but you will get a little tint like a yellowy orange, uh, yellowy green turquoisey blue kind of thing. You will get a few different tints, but the nigoris are pretty much milky white. So let's look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. Just to tell you the different things that we should talk about with sake, of course, according to the experts, I've got my table down here to fill in after the video. But the things that we should rate sake on is floral quality, fruitiness earthiness, sweetness, dryness, acidity, the impact when you take it in and then the tail as the flavour kind of dies off. So we'll talk about all of these with the aroma and the um, and the actual taste of it too. So let's take a look at that aroma and see how we get on then. 
Oh yeah, this one comes across as really very sweet, but there's a good little bit of floral kind of quality and some citrusy notes coming out of it. That's quite interesting. Um, yeah, that's one of the things you'll hear these little tunes when I'm filming these videos in Michiko's family's apartment. All the different electrical appliances in Japan play little songs, so you can be wandering through the house and you wonder, right, what's finished now? Is it the dishwasher? Is it the washing machine? What is it? You know, makes you a bit paranoid, to be honest. Machines coming to life. But, um, yeah, the aroma on this, this one is absolutely, um, it's absolutely lovely. Um, very kind of smooth and very sweet. Like I say, lots of nice kind of floral and grassy notes to this. Um, the rice comes across as being very smooth, and I think this one will really lean towards the sweet side of things. In my experience, the nigoris tend to be a little bit sweeter, actually. So just bear that in mind when you try them. Um, there's a little bit, there's a teeny, teeny bit of earthiness underneath it. I'm getting a good little bit of a kind of acidity to it, and you know, that kind of plays in with the sort of citrusy notes that I was picking out. But otherwise, it's very, very sweet. Yeah, this is a really, it, it comes, the aroma of this is really, really very nice. Um, lots of nice, kind of, the right racy sweetness, as I've said before, the Japanese description of sweetness is a little bit more savoury than ours, umami, I think they call it, although umami is generally savoury. But this is, the sakes, the sweet ones are a lot like the old Japanese sweets, which are kind of sweet rice based, essentially. Um, and that's exactly how this sake comes out. It's very, very, like, like sweet rice, it's not sweet like chocolate or fruit sweets that we would have in the West, but um, yeah, this is a lovely, it really is quite lovely smell on this one. One of the more kind of, the two things that really stick out to me in the aroma of this one are the floral qualities, the kind of citrus, and the way that that plays in with the citrus, and also the sweetness of the rice axis. So definitely one of the more kind of floral, astringent type sakis that I've come across, and also one of the kind of sweeter ones that I've had in recent times as well. Um, a little bit of earthiness underneath, like I said, but mainly sweet and kind of floral rather than anything else. In terms of fruitiness, to me, see, this one's a little bit, it's almost got like a teeny little bit of lemon to it or something. You get some kind of gooseberries and maybe peary notes in, in it as well. Um, maybe even a little bit of like an apricotty note or something too. So some really nice little fruity qualities in there as well. But yeah, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this one before you get stuck in. Um, it has a really lovely aroma to it. These sakes, of course, do tend to have very interesting and very nice aromas, but take a bit of time to enjoy that before you get stuck in. But let's have a taste of this one now. So this one is the Shiro Miki Sake, coming in at 15% ABV, a Kassin Nigori, a carbonated Nigori unfiltered sake with 60% milled rice grains, a Junmai pure rice ginjo 60%. Let's get stuck into this one from Harishi Kashuzo in Nara City, Narashi, Nara Prefecture, Japan. Slanja, Skull, Kampai. Oh yeah. That's really nice, actually. Um, first impression, compared to some of the other ones that I've come across, it feels a little bit more boozy, but I think the highest alcohol sake that I've had before, I've definitely had one that was 19%, and I want to say that I've had one that was like 22 or something like that, and it definitely wasn't shochu. Some of you will pick me up and say that was probably shochu, but it definitely was a, a Nihon shu. It wasn't a, a shochu which is more distilled, it's made from one of the byproducts of, of sake of course, but this, you know, this one to me feels a little bit boozier than some of the other ones of, you are getting a little bit of warmth down here from it. But yeah, the impact of this one is quite interesting, so when you take this one in, you do get a little bit of acidity out of it, and I suspect that will be because of the the carbonation, you know, normally CO2 dissolved in water will change the pH to about 5 or something like that. So you will get a little bit of an acidic quality out of this one. Something I remember from my chemistry masters. Good, put it to good use with alcohol. But um, yeah, it, you do get a little bit of acidity to this one towards the front of the palate when you take it in. But it smooths out really nicely and becomes really quite sweet. In the centre of your palate you're getting a lot of sweetness out of this one from the rice. 
As I said, the Nigori Sakis tend to be a little bit sweeter, and this, the rice in this one is quite bright. The main uh, kind of variable in your sakis, of course, other than the style and things like that, tends to be where the rice is grown, and because uh, you know different soils give you different kind of chemicals and minerals and all these different things. Different waters that it's grown in as well will also affect it. Different minerals dissolved in the water and stuff. Those are your two biggest variables when it comes to uh, to rice. But yeah, that's lovely. I really like this. It's a bit different. This one is more carbonated than the other Kassan Nigori that I had before. I think I've reviewed maybe four or five Nigoris for you on the channel now. Um, and this one, this is definitely one of the more, it's the most carbonated one. I think three of them have been uncarbonated. This is definitely the most carbonated out of all of them. That I've had, but as I say, that's only two. But yeah, a bit of acidity when you take it in, and the sweetness of the rice really lingers there with this one. This it, this is a very sweet sake generally, but the carbonation just gives you a little bit of acidity to it, in my opinion. It doesn't make it sour or anything, but you can really feel that just at the kind of behind the fruity part of the palate. So a nice little bit of acidity there, some sweet ricey notes behind it that really dominates the middle of the palate. And then the other flavours come out around the sides of the tongue. So in the back corners of the palate, there's definitely a little bit of earthiness there. But for me, the earthiness is very kind of um, subdued. The earthiness really takes a back seat in this one. Yeah, definitely the earthiness is, is really... Um, is really kind of um, reserved in this one. But as you come further forward along the sides of the palette, um, it does spread a little bit, but then you get some nice kind of floral notes on the um, on the front kind of corners of your palette, if you like. Um, and again, those give you a little bit of dryness the further you go into the aftertaste. The further you go into the tail of this sake, it does become a little bit drier, but generally, I would say this one is quite, um, it's actually, more sweet than anything else. It's not the smoothest of sakes that you're going to come across because it's carbonated, but it does really remain quite sweet into the aftertaste. Round the front curve of your tongue it becomes a little bit lighter and grassy, but you can still get some of the kind of floral element elements there. And behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get the nice kind of fruity qualities coming out of the sake. And for me, this one, it's kind of like what I described in the uh, in the aroma. Yeah, it really is quite like um, what you're picking up in the aroma. There is a bit of a kind of zesty, citrusy quality to this one for me. Um, definitely some of the kind of nice gooseberry notes. Maybe a little bit of lychee or something like that in here as well. It does have something a little bit more than just gooseberry. There's maybe... I don't know, is it a little bit... I don't know if it's pear, maybe? There is a little bit of a kind of juicy peary quality in there as well, but the fruitiness is quite light, but at the same time it's a little oily and a little bit kind of juicy at the same time, actually. The fruitiness really comes out more into the tail end of this sake as well. So yeah, this one, overall, I think if you took the carbonation out of this um, and had a little bit less acidity, um, this one, it would be one of the sweetest sakes that I've tried, but the carbonation just um, gives it a little bit more acidity and it, it almost brings out some of the earthy and floral characters a little bit more actually and that's that's an interesting kind of perspective on it I would say but I do like this one I mean I wouldn't hesitate to drink it again but at the same time I might be tempted to try some of the different styles I'm not sure how I feel about carbonation in sake to be honest with you I think I really like one of the reasons I really liked sake was you know trying the the June Mai's and the, the you know the smoothness that you got out of these the almost kind of silky mouth feel. I'm not sure how I feel about Kassan Nigori. Um, you know, something I need to experiment with a little bit more. So um yeah, I'm not sure about that, but it's interesting. As I say, it gives you a little bit more acidity and it helps bring out some of the kind of citrusy zesty qualities there is almost a little bit of a lemony grassy kind of thing on the front part of your palate there this one does feel a little bit more acidic than some of the other sakis that i've come across before i would be really curious to know how they get the carbonation in this i don't know if they put like a little 
um, one of these little rock things inside the bottle and let it um, go on or do, do they leave a little bit of the yeast in and you know let it ferment in the bottle as they do with craft beers I'm not sure about that because you know sediment that you normally get in craft beer it's a mix of malt and uh, and yeast of course so um, yeah interesting point about that I need to read up on how they actually carbonate sakes and things like that like I mentioned though this one is unpasteurized but you know just to finish off on the tail end with this one then that's the last thing we should talk about really and um, this one in the aftertaste it really is very very sweet in the centre of your palate some of the nice kind of fruity notes are lingering this the fruitiness has a little bit of an oily character to it but mainly it comes across as quite juicy but you've got a bit of floral quality a bit of a uh, and a bit of the earthiness there the, it becomes a little bit drier on the sides of your palate the further you go into the aftertaste as well but this one um i wouldn't this one's definitely not the driest of sake you're going to come across it's a really uh, it really leans more towards the sweet end of the spectrum in my mind, but the level of acidity it has from the carbonation is quite an interesting point to make about this one too. But um, yeah, in terms of the flavour profile, I think we can leave it at that with this one. Let's talk about the mouthfeel then. So, this one, you know, the Nigori as a style, generally it's a little bit more thick if you like, it's a little bit more kind of full bodied than some of the other ones but this one I would say it does it's kind of at the mid-range I think in terms of body um, compared to some of the other ones and I think it's the carbonation that just gives you a level of crispness to it so I would say it's one of the kind of mid-level sakis in terms of how thick it is its body level um, to me there's a little bit of oiliness to it in the aftertaste and that brings out some of the sweet qualities and also some of the fruitiness um, but it does have that level of crispness to it which is quite nice. The middle of your palate is very sweet um, you do feel a little bit of the acidity there the further you go into the aftertaste like I said the edge of your tongue kind of dries out the further you go into the the tail end of the sake as well and you've got a nice oily fruity character to it also so a really interesting one to try this and I'm glad that I was able to review it for you here on the channel and um, it's cool to appreciate this one as a, a sort of Cassin Nigori, it's another carbonated Nigori actually. As I say, I'm not sure how I feel about this, maybe I need to experiment with this sake style a little bit more, but definitely a cool introduction for you here on the channel of um, Harushika, Shuzo and uh, Nara Prefecture Sakis. There's quite a few breweries over there and it's quite close to me here in Osaka, so I'm sure you'll see more of these reviewed on the channel at some point in the future. But yeah, let's leave it at that for this one. This one is the Shiromiki Sake, um, a 15% Kasin Nigori Junmai Ginjo, uh, carbonated, unfiltered, 60% milled rice, pure rice sake um, from Harushika Shuzo in Nara City, in Nara Prefecture here in Japan. A really interesting one to review for you and I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this. As I say, I'm not an expert when it comes to sake, I just really enjoy doing these something a little bit different here on the channel but yeah as always thank you for watching let me know your own thoughts on this sake in the uh, comment section below let me know what your favorite sakes are from harushika shuzo as well you will see me review another one of their seasonal sakes uh, in a few videos time i'm not sure exactly when these will publish but keep an eye out i try to publish one sake review at least per month but thank you again for watching until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this and do give me some other sake recommendations in the comment section below until the next time slant you just now and i'll catch you guys soon this one was the shiro miki sake at coming in at 15 percent abv a kasin nigori junmai ginjo from uh, harushika shuzo in narashi nara prefecture nara ken japan slant you, skull kampai cheers